Hello and welcome to the new episode of the Network and Cisco Packet Tracer tutorials for beginners. Xiaowash is here and in today's tutorial, we continue our routing protocols with OSPF inter-area routing. In previous tutorials, you have learned how to config the basic OSPF. Before we start the configuration, let's take a look at this tutorial topology. We have a OSPF area 0 over the network of 10.0.1.0/24. R1 is connected to R2 and R3. There are two different networks behind R1s. There are R2 and R3 considered as the ABR or area border routers in OSPF because they have a one side on area 0 and other side on other area. For example, OSPF area 25 is area between R2 and R5, and we have two different networks beyond R5. In this side of the network, we have OSPF area 37 between router 3 and router 7, and two different networks behind R7. So we are going to configure the R1, R2, and R3, and these networks inside the area 1, and we have a R5 and R7 in their own areas. So let's begin with R1. I've did a basic configuration on the link and interfaces loopbacks already. Let's take a look. Show IP interface brief. As you can see here, we have physical network 10. We have a loopback 0 represent the router number and loopback 1 and 2, which are the two different networks behind R1. So let's do the configuration. Global config, router OSPF 1. Okay, we have a router ID, set the router ID 1.1.1.1, even we have a loopback and highest uh, IP in a loopback considered as a router ID, but as you remember in previous tutorial, we prefer we have a full control of our network. So let's advertise the network 10.0.1.0/24 using the wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255 in area 0. If you don't remember what is wildcard mask, you can refer to the previous tutorials, but in the show the wildcard mask is opposite of the subnet mask. So we advertise a loopback in this network is like 32 means 0.0.0.0 in area 0 and finally we advertise the network 10 1.1.0 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, area 0 slash 24 and network 2. So here is a configuration of the OSPF on R1. We have a router OSPF 1. We have a router ID. We have a physical advertise in area 0, loopback advertise in area 0, and two networks over the loopback both also advertise on area 0. So we can use the show IP protocol command to take a look at the what routing protocol are configured in our router. We're running the OSPF process one and we advertise these four network in our OSPF. Show IP route OSPF. At this time, we don't have any router neighbors. We don't have any OSPF network. So let's continue to R2. Let's take a look at configuration of R2. Here we go. Show IP interface brief. We have the network, everything in place, and we go to global config, router OSPF process one, router ID 2.2.2.2. .2 we start with network in area 0, 10.0.1.0 slash 24, area 0, network. 2.2.2.0000 area 0 we advertise the loopback in area 0 and we expecting the neighborship between R2 and R1 is come up very fast here we go and let's advertise 10.2.1.0 in area 0 and 10.2.2.0/24 as well so the final network is 10.25.1.0/24 area 25. So let's close look on the configuration on R2, OSPF, process 1, router ID set, physical network advertised on area 0, loopback advertised on area 0, neighborship came up, and two networks are advertised in area 0, and the link, physical link between R2 and R5 is also advertised in area 25. 
So now let's take a look at show IP protocols. And here what we have in R2, Rotor SPF1, four different networks are advertised in area zero and one network is advertised in area 25. Show IP route, let's see what we have in OSPF. So, so far we've learned about the router one look back and two networks behind router one. So it's good, we learned via OSPF. Let's go to the router five and configure the router five OSPF process. Enable, show IP interface brief, global configuration mode, router OSPF1, router ID 5.5.5, network 10.25.0 slash 24, and this is located in area 25. So please remember all the area must be directly connected to the area zero, and one of the most important usage of areas is used for summarization. OSPF as a good design must following proper hierarchy for IP addressing. So the neighbors came up and let's advertise the look back into that area 25 and also advertise 10.5.1 networks in area 25, 5.2 in area 25. Let's a close look in OSPF configuration on R5. Router OSPF1, router ID set. We have a physical network between R2 and R5 in area 25. Neighbor comes up. Network advertisement for loopback 1 and 2 as well as 0 here. So show IP protocol. Here we go. We run the OSPF1. All the network are advertised in area 25. Show IP route OSPF. Let's see what we have learned. And this is the beauty of OSPF. We LAN via OSPF inter area. The IA is a keyword for inter area. About the R1 loopback, R2 loopback, which were advertised in area zero. Two networks behind the R1, the network between R1 and R2, and here two networks behind R2. So we LAN all of them. That's very good. And let, let's take a look from the R1 perspective. Show IP route, OSPF, and see what we have learned here. Here we go. We learn from the area zero OSPF, loopback of R2. We have via inter area OSPF, loopback of R5. We learn area zero via area zero, two networks behind R2, and we learn the networks belong to the R5 as well as the link between R2 and R5. So R1 now got full connectivity and know about the networks in area 25. Let's continue with our configuration with R3. Go to the CLI, enable, show IP interface brief, global configuration, router OSPF1, router ID 3.3.3, Network 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Okay, using the wildcard mask in area zero. Network 3.3 slash 32, area zero. So in a short, the neighbor relationship came up and let's advertise two networks of 10.3.1.0, 00255, area zero, as well as 10.2, okay, and finally we have a network 10.37.1 slash 24 located in area 37. Let's take a closer look in the OSPF configuration R3, router ID set, physical networks in area 1, look back in area 0, sorry, in area 0 here, neighbors between R2 and R1 came up. This network and these networks are 10.3 networks advertised in area zero and finally advertised for a link of 37. So let's see, show IP protocol on R3. Here we go, we have OSPF1. We have a, these four networks advertised in area zero and single network advertised in area 37 between R3 and R7. And finally go to the R7 
global configuration mode, show IP interface brief, conf t, router OSPF process 1, router ID 777, network 10.37.10/24 in area 37, network for loopback address, area 37, maybe she must come up very fast. So yeah, here we go. We have a network of 10.7.1 slash 24, area 37, and finally we have 7.2.0. Here we go. Let's take a closer look for R7, OSPF1, router ID set, and represent networks are advertised in area 37. Show IP protocol. We know what's going on in router 7, OSPF 1, and these four networks are advertised via area 37. Show IP route, OSPF, and we see. Now we have a full overview from R7 perspective to the network. And all the routes learned by OSPF inter area, router 1 loopback, router 2 loopback, router 3 loopbacks, router 5 loopbacks, the link between R1, R2, and 3, two networks behind R1, two networks behind R2, two networks behind R3, and two networks behind R5, and finally, the link between R2 and R5. So we expected to be able, from R7, ping R5 networks. So let's test. We go to R7, ping 10.5.1.5, and here we go, we have a full connectivity on both 10.5.1.5 and 10.5.2.5. And from R5 perspective, show IP route, OSPF, this time we have to add the R7 networks as well. Let's take a look. Here we go, inter area, R1 loopback, R2 loopback, R3, R7 loopbacks, all here, land via inter area OSPF. And each network behind them includes the R7 networks, as well as link 37 between R3 and R7. So let's ping 10.7.1.7, be able to ping. So we have a full connectivity between R5 located in area 25 to R7 located in area 37. And let's take a look from R1 perspective how the routes looks like. Here we go. We have a show IP route OSPF. Via the normal OSPF area 0, we land loopback of R2, loopback of R3, two networks behind R2, and two networks behind R3. These are all advertised in area 0 of OSPF. But we also have the OSPF inter area for loopback of R5, loopback of R7, as well as network of R5 network of R7 and the links between R2 and R5 and the links between R3 and R7. We should be able to ping then any network from R5, 10.5.1.5. Yes, here we go. We also should be able to ping any network behind R7 and we have a full connectivity. From R5 perspective, we know about show IP route OSPF 10 include 10.1 and we know we can reach to the 10.1.1.1 which is the network behind R1. I hope this video is informative for you. Watch, learn, subscribe and share contents. Thanks for watching.